Hello everyone. The following story is a continuation from the stories in the Uranosaurus and Sukumimus videos, so please go watch them so you can catch up. Or you can just skip forward to the facts part of the video. Thank you. The wet season is in full swing, and once again the lowlands have turned to floodplains. The herd of Oranosaurus are busy feeding on one of the few solid bits of land not covered by water, and amongst them are the two brothers. Now over two years old, they have survived the most dangerous part of their lives. Incredibly, in that short time they have grown to almost full size, and are nearly as large as the eight meter adults. They still have some growing to do, and eagerly feed on the low-lying plants. As the herd moves, they come across an unusual but common sight. A herd of Nigerosaurus. They are sauropods, but a species that is only two meters tall and grazes on ground plants as opposed to high branches. Although they are longer than the Oranosaurus, most of their body is either neck or tail, and the hadrosaurs stand much taller than the slow sauropods. The large herd of the long reptiles slowly moves towards the Uranosaurus, seemingly oblivious to their presence, hoovering up the low vegetation with their wide mouths. They even feed on the submerged water plants, though they have to keep raising their heads out of the water between mouthfuls. The Uranosaurus can reach higher than the Nigerosaurus, and so the two species don't compete directly with each other, but they don't walk amongst each other either. Except for the two brothers, they have never been this close to any Nigerosaurus, and begin to walk into the herd out of curiosity. They move around them, watching them with interest, even if the Nigerosaurus barely even acknowledge them being there. They simply continue to bite and swallow as much as they can, most not even turning an eye towards the sudden intruders amongst them. The brothers file past each one, scanning them with both sight and smell. The two thought they'd get more of a reaction from the hungry Nigerosaurus, but even when they were right beside one, each one seemed oblivious to them. The first brother made a honking noise to his sibling to get his attention. When the brothers looked at each other, it was obvious that they considered these newcomers a little dull, if not a bit dim-witted. With that, they turned around and headed back towards their herd. The first brother squeezed between two Nigerosaurus, when one of them pushed sideways, and suddenly, the young Oranosaurus found himself wedged between the two sauropods. He was unable to move, sandwiched between the two Nigerosaurus that either didn't know or didn't care. After trying to wiggle out of the predicament and failing miserably, he then let out a series of annoyed hoots and barks. This time he got a reaction. Both Nigerosaurus lifted their heads and looked right at him, mouths still packed with plants. They stared at him silently with dull eyes, and then after a few seconds, lowered their heads and returned to eating. Now more frustrated, the young male saw his sibling looking at him from the herd's edge. Although Aranosaurus couldn't laugh, it was clear by the look on his face and the way he bobbed his head that he found the whole situation quite entertaining. At that point, one of the Nigerosaurus moved, squishing the first brother even more. With no other option, he resorted to using the small spikes on each thumb and jabbed it into the Nigerosaurus's side. It wasn't enough to draw blood, but the effect was instant. With a surprised yelp, the sauropod moved to the side and the brother was released. With a quick breath, he righted himself and ran for the edge of the herd. The Nigerosaurus were now more alert, having heard one of their own call out, and they swung their heads back and forth looking for a threat. The Uranosaurus dodged the swinging heads and tails, till he broke away from the herd and returned to his brother. The second brother was about to bump into his sibling when a strange noise came from behind him. Turning his head, he saw that one of the Nigerosaurus that had fallen behind the group was making a terrified call, and beside it, was a familiar predator. Sukumimus, the largest land predator in his area. This was a sub-adult, but it was still large enough to attack a fully grown Nigerosaurus. The crocodile-like dinosaur slammed its body into the Nigerosaurus. The impact pushed it sideways, but didn't topple it. 
Despite being similar lengths, the small sauropod was still heavier. This was in fact the first time this Sukumimus had tried to hunt an Asiosaurus, and now seeing brute strength wasn't enough, changed his plan. The predator maneuvered his long jaws and snapped them shut around the Asiosaurus' neck and pulled backwards, preventing it from running. At that point the two brothers sounded the alarm and ran for their herd, but the Asiosaurus didn't panic. They moved closer together and faced away from the attacker. The solo Nagiasaurus was on his own, however, and as the predator's hook-like teeth dug into his neck, the victim slipped in the wet soil and crashed to the ground. The Sukumimus didn't let go, and as the struggling prey thrashed about, the movement only caused his teeth to cut even deeper. The soil around the two was turning red with the mass amount of blood that was spread by the rain, and eventually the unlucky Nagiasaurus bled out and went still. Ignoring the herd no more than 50 meters away, the successful carnivore moved to the Nagiasaurus' belly and began to feed. He couldn't move this corpse and needed to eat his fill as quickly as possible. The two brothers made it to their herd and all of them now began to leave the area at a quick pace. But the brothers saw that the Nagiasaurus didn't flee. It was not just the fact that their bodies weren't built for running, but because they knew the Sukumimus wouldn't attack them now, and they were safer packed close together. Despite one of their numbers being dead so close to them, they continued to feed, their vast herd acting like nothing had happened. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be looking at a very interesting sauropod, Nigersaurus. Nigersaurus was originally discovered in 1976 in the Republic of Niger, but wasn't named till 1999. For a sauropod, it was quite small, at 9 meters long, standing 2 meters tall, and weighing around 4 tons. It had a relatively short neck with 13 vertebra. It had short, strong legs, with the front legs being two-thirds the length of the back legs, and a long tail. Its skeleton was very lightweight, filled with air sacs, and in some cases, the bones are so thin that you can shine a strong beam of light through them. They are so lightweight that scientists aren't entirely sure how the animal's skeleton coped with everyday use, only that they did. The most unusual part of this animal was its jaws, which were very wide and flat. This has led many people to compare it to a cow or a living lawnmower. Inside its squarish mouth, there was over 500 teeth, which it used to mow over low-lying vegetation. Each of these small teeth was replaced every 14 days, which is even more than hadrosaurs, which had a very similar feeding method. Nigesaurus likely didn't chew its food. It simply sliced off plant matter and then swallowed it whole. Now, there is a lot of debate over where Nigesaurus held its head, and if it could raise it very high. It is believed that it mostly faced down to graze on ground level plants, and that the act of lifting its head up above its shoulder was possible, but may have been straining. Either way, it is clearly evolved to prioritize low level grazing and not on high browsing like its larger relatives. Whatever it ate, there must have been tons of it, as it had to share its food with other herbivores such as the hadrosaurs and since Nigerosaurus is the second most commonly found animal in the formation, it's likely they were quite abundant. It is believed to have had a fleshy snout, however the olfactory region of its brain was underdeveloped, so it didn't have a good sense of smell. Its eyes were higher on its head than other sauropods, and may have given it near 360 degree vision. This was likely its best defense against predators, because it was likely common prey for the region's top predators like Sukumimus and the crocodilian Sarcosuchus. I do like animals that break the norm of when it comes to what we think of certain families or groups. We usually think of sauropods as massive, tall and long animals getting to the highest treetops, and yet Nigesaurus is almost the complete opposite. In fact, it seems like they sacrifice some of their most important features to become heavy, slow lawnmowers. But I digress. Evolution doesn't have an end goal after all. I personally really like Nigesaurus, but what do you think of them? 
Do you believe that all these adaptations were better or worse than the usual sauropod design? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to cover in a future episode. And until then, stay tuned, because the story of the two brothers and the dinosaurs they share their home with isn't over yet.